Day Estes with the Garden Club of Houston. And we are presenting different facets of gardening for the public. Today I'm speaking on flower arranging, which gives me great joy, pleasure, and peace. So the first thing you think about is where is this arrangement going to go? So therefore, your first thought is to choose the container. So I have several here. This one is flat that would go against a wall, low for a dinner table, a little occasional piece, say for a guest or a powder room, and then just some whimsy, and then some show off, something pretty, plain that you can do anything with. After you've chosen your container and where it's going to be, the next thing is how to prepare your flowers and how to keep them where you want them to be. You're going to need a nice pair of clippers and a knife. And you're going to have many other ways of keep holding them in place. You can take chicken wire, which is in here. You can take, this is merely scotch tape, which disappears. There are all sorts of, these are now coming back. It's called a Kinzan or a frog. And, they, and then they are coming back in where you can get them. For a while they were hard to get. These little igloo products are great because you can stick them on the side of things or just use them for a dome. They're very easy to get and they, the stores are so good about carrying this now. You don't have to go to a florist. These are all over the place and easy to get. This is an inner liner which can go in if you have a delicate uh, a container that you don't want to scratch. So, this is useful too. Now, I must say, everything has to be sparkling clean because the flowers are living things. So, you have to clean the knives. You have to clean, clean water. Let it sit out overnight. And so, or use bottled water so that there are no minerals in there and then you'll have a long-lasting flower arrangement that you will enjoy using and seeing every day. Another handy helper is Oasis, which is floral foam. You only get one stab at floral foam and you must put it on the top of the water and let it sink so that the flowers get the moisture they need. Otherwise, it'll, they'll, you'll poke your stem in and it'll just be dry in the middle and you'll be very disappointed. This can be shaved easily with a knife or even fishing wire. So that, the, the simplest thing I did was use a rubber band. Easily gotten and I have a bouquet in seconds. It's easy today to get beautiful flowers from the grocery store. Sometimes I find that they're a better buy than where the wholesale people have flowers because they buy in volume. So if you go to the grocery and you see something you like, take it home and play because that's what I think about flower arranging. It's play. So first of all though, you want them to last. You've bought them even at a good price. And so the first thing you do is make a fresh cut at a slant because the slant will give you more intake of the water. Then you want to put them into the water as quickly as you can. Now, when you keep them in water, you want no leaves under water because that just makes the flowers die. So you, and also, you want all the energy to go to the floral part, not the, not the stem. So, since I, okay, so I'm gonna again cut this with a fresh cut on the slant. A lot of times when it's a woody, you not only cut it a slant, but you take a knife or this and open a little more so that it really does intake water. So, or a lot of people, some people use a hammer. I don't like that. I would rather put, put a plus in the bottom of uh, the stem. All right, now let's talk about using your flowers in an arrangement and making it appropriate with the container. Not only can you buy your flowers, you can buy your fruits and vegetables, incorporate them, and then use them later. 
I have some limes here that I, and you put water in it, the limes don't mind at all. Now, Gaelic sleeves, every arranger loves Gaelic because it covers up everything, including my little strips of scotch tape. So I'm going to make a tiny collar here, which may or may, which may or may fall until I get the rest of it in, which is going to happen. And then I'm going to, oh, lucky me. Now I'm going to get some adorable little flowers that are called either Kermit the Frog or Yoko Ono, and they're easily attainable. Now, because I'm going all green, which is very pleasant, I can now add this sprightly little touch at the top. That's just kind of a festive little fun thing, and then we'll put these leaves back. I put them in first and that didn't work so well. So now that they're more anchored, I'm going to go another way. So there's no right way and there's no wrong way. So you just experiment and you get what you want. Okay, this is fun. If you have a clear glass bowl and this would be perfect for a dinner party and it would be very enhanced with candles, which always works well with uh, crystal and glass. And I'm going to take the Gaelic sleeves and I'm going to take these Kermits and I'm going to just float a tiny little centerpiece. And you could put these all over along the table or if you have a great big one. And so this is something that, it, that would be not impeding your viewer or across the table and just a little fun thing. That is so simple to do. You don't have to get complicated. A simple, beautiful vase calls for simple, beautiful flowers. Tulips, I'm, I am using white with white. And I am placing, just placing my tulips in this deliciously small hole. So I don't have to do any mechanics at all. Although I have something stuffed in the bottom, I think. It's a, perhaps a plastic bag of sorts so that they don't go all the way down. So this is just making a statement with plain and simple, one flower, one bunch. So easy to get at the grocery store. If you have the right container, look around and you'd be surprised what interesting containers. I love to use bottles, particularly bottles with some color. So, this is, again, something simple, but I'm going to make it a little more interesting. I have to have one more, and I can't stand it. I'm going to shove it in somehow. I bought it, and I'm going to put it in there. But restraint is restraint, which I'm not known for, so it's up to you. Now, there's no particular thing to this. It's, it's, uh, this shape sort of mimics the shape of the container. I'm going to add to my tulips some bear grass, or they're steel grass, they're mini grasses. And what's fun is this gives it a little more motion, and it also mimics the shape of the container beneath. And you do want to remember to put it, make sure it's all the way around if it's going to be displayed all the way around. Now, I like what I've done, but I thought, you know, it's always nice to bring in something from your own garden. So I found these little uh, berries, that these are flowers that are going to become berries. This is sky flower. And I'm gonna put in two. Because if I put in, and three is better, but if I uh, just put in one, it would become the Lone Ranger and everybody would just look at it. So that's not, that's not good. Sometimes when your container is too tall for your plant material, you can simply put something in the bottom that will keep your plant material from slipping to the bottom. You're, you, you're not pay, they're not paying to show stems, so you can do that. And then if something is wobbly, marbles are fabulous. But if you use marbles, put them in a baggie first. They're not good when you're trying to use them as a mechanic because they can't move. If you're going to do that, get pebbles because the marbles just roll on you. This is smoke tree, and this is something I've never seen. But what I'm talking about now is color, and what I've done is, is have a trio of uh, similar 
monochromic green, monochromatic greens. And I love the purple that plays off of the green. So I am using the smoke tree and I'm filling my background, my line material first. There's round material, which is focal, and there's line material, and the rest is filler. And you want to have, not only do you not want a Lone Ranger, but you want threes and fives because it's more pleasing to the eye. But I, everybody I've ever taught already knows that. These wonderful potato plants. And I love it that they can cascade down. So this is a pretty boring vase. What do I do but connect it to the top? and bring it around. Then I have something to kind of ground it on the table. I'm probably, this is a little aggressive, and so I'm going to trim it. But for right now, he'll show you the finished product in a bit, but for right now, I'm going to use it to get a little dimension on what is a pretty boring container. Now, this is out of my garden. I'm being careful careful to take off the leaves that might go under water and spoil my arrangement. And if you've ever smelled an old arrangement, you know what I'm talking about. This is my black crepe myrtle, which is something new, big box store. Now to lighten this up a little bit, I need some light green because contrast is very important too. So I'm going to add the pickerel weed that loves the wet spot in my garden. And I'm crazy about the arrow shape. So it just gives me a little, now I don't want to do this, that makes ears. So I've got to put it at a different height and to the back so that it reads full. I'm adding a little bit of my bear grass because I have it, again, to get a garden feel, to open this up. This is a rather severe container. So these wonderful wild reeds Give it some air and give it some motion. Now, I am now ready to do the last arrangement, or possibly next or last, depending. These are wonderful little aeroids that grow in my garden. And again, I'm going with the color theme to go with this. So, I'm playing off the green with the purple. You can do this with any of the complementary colors. This is one of my favorite containers, and it, I don't think it costs $25, and I use it all the time, and everybody wants to know where I got it. And by the way, if you stick these in water, they will root within the week, and then you plant them again. And I love recycling. I, I live by it. I reuse everything. And if I want to give some height to these limes, I will use a skewer or this is a chopstick, insert it. It gives a little scent and you can use them again. So I like to recycle everything and that goes for the flower arrangements too. So I love to shop the grocery aisle. The gro I'm going to incorporate my smoke bush because I don't want any of this mechanic showing underneath. And I'm, now I'm at the filler stage so it's all easy going from here. Just cover it up. I love these leaves, and they really do stay well when conditioned. Now, I do need to talk about conditioning. If you're going to pick from your garden, you need to do it the night before or early, early, early in the morning when it's really cool and the plant material is full of moisture. And then uh, make sure that, again, you uh, bring it in immediately and put it in water with that fresh cut. But it's very important time of day that you might be collecting your plant material from your garden. And, and I say, come to our Bulb and Plant Mart and get some of these beautiful things, which is where I've gotten them. And that's the best place to shop for this exotic and unusual material.